Hey everyone, it is Dr. Carol here. Welcome Chemistry 40S and Chemistry 40H people from all across the province. We are going to talk about some rate laws. I know a few of you have seen this before, but not everyone. I will go at a rather quick rate, however. So, I'm on page 31, and in booklet 3, you all have the booklet. And uh, I'm just going to read through here, and uh, you can follow along, and I'll skip a little bit. Um, we see rate is affected by temperature, surface area, catalyst, natures of reactants, the concentration of reactants, and the rate determining step. Remember those good role plays we did for rate determining step? Well, rate law is going to relate the concentrations of the reactants in the rate determining step to the rate of a reaction. And we focus on concentration of reactants rather than products. Remember, the mathematical definition of rate is just a change in concentration of some reactant with respect to time, the absolute value of that. Um, and as A gets consumed, the lower its concentration becomes, so the rate decreases with time. The rate law officially is K times A to the X power. Now, I like to use M and P power, but they use X, Y, Z sometimes in this page. You'll see both of them. It's okay. K is known as the rate constant. Some books call it the specific rate constant and because it's specific to a given reaction and how you write that reaction. A is the concentration in square brackets of A in units of moles per liter per second. And X is the power, also known as exponent. It's called the order with respect to A. Typically, orders are 0, 1, 2, or 3. There's some weirder ones, but those are the ones we'll encounter. If you're at a higher temperature, your rate constant is higher, and therefore your rate's higher. Okay, and it takes less time for something to happen. The units of K depend on the overall order of the reaction. If the overall order is zero, the units of K are moles per liter per second. If it's first order, it's just per seconds. Second order, molarity to the minus one, second to the minus one. Third order, molarity to the minus two, second to the minus one. Okay, so um, I would give you that on any test. You don't have to memorize that. The order of a reaction indicates how the concentration of reactants affect the rates. If an order is zero order, that means that the reaction rate is not affected by changes in the reaction concentration. Zero order aren't that common. We'll see one or two, but they aren't that common. Uh, first order reaction are much more common. Nuclear decay is an example of a first order uh, reaction process. So if A is doubled, the rate doubled. If a concentration is tripled, the rate triples. So it's a direct proportion. That's known as a first order reaction. If a reaction is second order, doubling the concentration would increase the rate by a factor of four, which is doubling squared. If I triple the concentration of A, the rate would go up three squared, which is nine. Now you can have just reaction, uh, just reactant A bouncing with other reactant A's, or you could have A and B smashing into each other. And the rate law would be K times A to the X, B to the Y. I like to write A to the M, B to the N. Uh, the rate depends both on A and B concentration. And each reactant can affect the rate differently. They both don't have to be first order. The overall order is the sum of the order with respect to A and the order with respect to B. So the overall order, you just add your exponents together. Okay? So here's some examples. We've got rate is K times CO squared times O2 to the first. So overall, it's third order. Second order with respect to CO, first order with respect to O2. So now it says, well, what if I decided to double the concentration of CO? So I don't change O2, but I double CO. So doubling squared, there it is. It's four times faster. Obviously, CO and another CO and O2 have to be in the rate determining step. I don't know what the products are in the rate determining step, but I know that CO, CO, two moles of CO, one mole of O2 are in the rate determining step. What happens to the rate if O2 is tripled? If O2 is tripled, then the rate is tripled. Okay? So, uh, you could say, well, what if I double CO and also triple oxygen concentrations? Well, then the rate would go up 12 times. You would just multiply the factors together. 
Here's one example two. Rate is k times NO2 times NO3 to the 0 times O2 squared. So the total reaction order is 3. NO2 to the first order, NO3 to the 0 order, O2 to the second order. Write them, add them together, you get 3. If I double NO2, then the rate doubles. If I triple NO3, oh, that sounds like it might be exciting, right? Well, no, nothing happens because the NO3 can't be in the rate determining step because it's not in the rate law. So changing the concentration of NO3 is not going to change the rate. Okay, what happens if I start fresh and now make the oxygen concentration half as much as what it was before? Well, if it's half as much as what it was before, then that's a quarter of what the rate is. Okay? Now, the beauty of these videos is you can pause them at any time and go over things and then get back to it, right? That's, that's one of the many beautiful things of the video. Example three, if the rate of the above reaction is two moles per liter per second, sometimes books like to write it like that, what's the new rate when oxygen is tripled and NO2 is half? So if we triple oxygen, then it's going to go up nine times. If we have NO2, half NO2, then it's half time, so it's nine halves. We multiply nine halves times two, and we get nine. Okay, nine moles per liter per second. So, let's get, delve into this in a bit more detail here as I look in my page here and go to uh, page 33. Most reactions, the rate law, the specific rate constant, and the mechanism of reaction can only be determined experimentally, not from the reaction stoichiometry. How, remember stoichiometry, molar ratios, all that good stuff from grade 11? However, for reactions that occur in a single step, known as a simple reaction, or one elementary reaction, the rate law can be determined just by the uh, balanced equation. Okay? So if you've got A of A plus B of B goes to C of C plus D of D, the rate is going to be K times A to the little a times B to the little b. And um, that is if it happens all in one step. You'll find that the order will very, very rarely be more than three in this kind of case where it's an elementary action. Now here, example five, one of the reactions that results in smog is the reaction of ozone and nitrogen monoxide. This reaction is thought to occur in a single step according to the equation O3 plus NO goes to NO2 uh, plus O2. And there we have a rate being K times O3 times NO. So that would be a second order process. Okay, so you can read the summary on your own. Um, now, let's get to some of these chart tables here on page 34. So, um, we have here a uh, rate law for reaction. Now, if this all happened in one step, it would be third order. So, what you do is you compare the trials and see what's going on. You want to control your variables. So, let's start off with H2O2. Okay, it's um, first order, sorry, it's 0.1 molar, and 0.1 molar, then 0.2 molar in trial 3. HI is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And then initial rate, you just can call it the rate. Well, somehow we calculate the rate either through the disappearance of one of the reactants or the formation of one of the products, moles per liter per second. So the game here, and this is all worked out for you uh, in um, something on the website. Now I'll send that to you uh, via email and or Edsby, which are the uh, solutions to these questions on page 34 to 40. Uh, but just the strategy is focus on uh, H2O2. So the order, let's say, rate is K times H2O2 to the M times HI to the N. So uh, I would want to control my variables. So I'm going to choose from trial 1 to trial 3. HI stays constant and H2O2 doubles. And lo and behold, the rate doubles, which means H2O2 is going up at the same pace as the rate. Whenever that happens, the 
order with respect to that reactant is first order. Okay, so it's first order with respect to H2O2. And then now focusing on the power N for HI, we see that H2O2 stays constant between trial 1 and trial 2. So we make that comparison. HI doubles, and so does the rate. So they go up at the same pace again. So the reaction is first order with respect to HI. Overall, the reaction is second order. Rate is K times H2O2 times HI. Okay? You can fill that in if you want over here or look at the uh, answer sheet that I'm going to send you. Um, notice that it's not H2O2 times HI squared. That would be only, well, I won't say only, but that would be the case if it happened just in one uh, elementary reaction, if it was a simple reaction. We know it can't be a simple reaction because the rate is K times H2O2 times HI. If you want to find the value for K, you can choose any trial. Traditionally, trial 1 is used, so K would just be the rate, 0 0.0076, divided the product of 0.1 and 0.1. And what is this again? This is a second order reaction, so the units of K would be most uh, per liter to the minus 1, second to the minus 1. Okay, here's example 2 on page 35 and uh, we have we know darn well this cannot be a simple reaction because we have uh, six things hitting each other's once a six body collision I know mosh pits can get pretty wild but uh, six bodies is, is too wild so this has to be broken down into a series of steps so I'm looking, I want to focus on A here, so on B and C to stay constant. Oh, if I go from trial 1 to trial 2, A doubles and the rate doubles. And once you know that, okay, it's first order with respect to A, you don't have to find other ones. It's first order with respect to A, you don't have to compare, make other trial comparisons for A. You do for B and C. <laughs> so for B, um, let's see, A... Let's go from trial 2 to trial 3. A stays constant, C, C stays constant, B doubles, and the rate goes up, oh, that's four times. That's double squared, right? Therefore, the order of the reaction is 2 for B. So it's 1 for A and 2 for B. 1 for all and all for 1. Now, what about C? Let's see, where does A and B stay the same, but C change? Controlling our variables. Um... Uh, let's see, where do we get that? I'm looking here. Oh, between 2 and 4. A stays constant, B stays constant, C doubles. And the rate, oh, the rate does diddly squat. From 2 to 4, the rate doesn't do anything. Therefore, it's zero order. It means that C is not in the rate determining step. So the rate law is going to be K times A times B squared. B there or B squared. And then you can get the value of the rate constant by plugging in. So it's third order overall. And you can get K. Just use the data from trial number one. Now, why do you even care to do all this? One reason is that if you want to industrially make some of these chemicals, you want to use small samples, get the rate law, and then see is it feasible to make these chemicals in a reasonable amount of time. So you see in trial five, they give you A, B, and C, and then you plug in to the rate law you got from the data from the first four trials and all those compar comparisons. And uh, that's why you do that. Part D says if you have the rates B and C, how would you isolate for A? Okay. Then there's some practice problems which you can do. Uh, I just want to say one thing. When they talk about decreasing by a factor of two, if you're talking about gas gas laws, um, it's like Boyle's law. So if decreased by a factor of two, that means the concentration of each gas goes up by a factor of two. So overall goes up by a factor of four. So you see that sometimes. So please try this on your own on 36 and also on 37. Oh, even other ones. Well, if you want to become a star, 
do even more do this long answer question wow that's a that's okay that's fine wait another one well if you want to be a superstar do that superstar not superstar superstar do the stuff on 39 okay and on 40 Wow, you'll, you will be a great law expert if you do all that. That'll help you. And speaking about experts and doing things, I want you to start working once you're finished those, however many you want to do. Where are the marks? The marks are in the turnip review booklet. Well, no, it's been switched now to a turnip assignment. And I don't know why I called it turnip. It was one of those many memes that I thought of that got all mixed up. And so... Oh, I, I think I only have 15 minutes on here. Okay. Oh, crap. Oh, heck. I'm more than 15 minutes. I wonder if... Okay. Oh, no. I think I think I got some trial version. I think I can do a few more minutes. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to uh, say that cuss word there. Um, omit questions 12, 28, 29, 33, and 41 on the turn of booklet. 12, 28, 29, 33, and 41. And so when you're doing this, and this will be due, oh, let's say Thursday. How about Thursday? That sounds good. Just uh, take a picture of the answers. Take a nice sheet of paper. Use a dark pen. Use the Microsoft Lens slash Scan PDF app. That's the best one and then send it to me to my icvmcmtc at gmail.com icvmcmtc at gmail.com so that'll be due Thursday how about Thursday morning before noon okay just to, just to have a little bit of extra uh, focus so go through that and uh, we'll talk more about this on Tuesday, I'll be available for questions, of course. I'm going to give you the kinetics test on Thursday or Friday. It will be one that you'll do at home. And you'll return it to me first day back after spring break. Sounds like fun? Okay. Enjoy. Hope you do all this stuff at a fairly good rate.